okay mm. so now we'll be discussing about quadrantal theory in this what happens as we have already discussed that every angle that will be measured will be an acute angle ranging from 0 degree to 90 degree in this because what happens the reference meridian or the reference axis that we take is the north south axis so every angle that will be measuring will be from either the northern axis or the southern axis and apart from measuring the magnitude of angle there we will also mention that that particular angle is lying in which quadrant maybe like north 70 degree west it means that particular angle is in north west quadrant and it is inclined at an angle of 70 degree in west direction from northern axis okay each and every angle that we measure okay is either with reference to northern axis or with reference to southern axis if it is lying below below means in second quadrant and third quadrant if then if that particular angle of a line is lying it means it will be measured with reference to southern axis and if it is lying in above two quadrants that is the first one and the fourth one then that particular angle will be mentioned with reference to the northern axis so here the angle can be measured clockwise or counter clockwise in both direction the only thing that remains is all the angles that are given are with reference to either northern or southern axis and we also mention that that particular angle which we are talking about is in which direction okay it can be northeast northwest southeast and southwest these four quadrants exist and in these four quadrants where this angle is lying and that particular angle will never be given with reference to western or eastern direction the reference axis is north south only okay either the ang angle will be measured with reference to northern axis or it will be mentioned with reference to the southern axis okay so at the bottom with the help of a figure i have tried to means depict that for each and every quadrant how we can give an angle in the first figure you can see if that phi angle is 70 degree then how that angle will be reported it will be north 70 degree west okay the four figures that have been shown at the below at the bottom of this slide you can see if phi angle that is shown if it is 60 70 degree then how the angle will be shown it is the angle is lying in the fourth quadrant that is north west quadrant in this the angle has been shown with reference to north so it will be north 70 degree west similarly if we are talking about the second case and suppose here phi is 65 degree so it will be in north east quadrant as it has been shown the first quadrant and the angle will be reported as north 65 degree east similarly for the third one we can see that the angle is lying in second quadrant and the angle will be reported here as south 60 degree east okay if angle is 60 degree and for the last case as we can see the angle is lying in the third quadrant and it is in southwest okay always remember that angle will not be shown as west alpha degree south it won't be shown this way it will always be shown either with reference to north or with reference to south for the last two cases the angles are in bottom quadrants second and third so angles have been shown with reference to south and in the first two figures they were in upper quadrants first and fourth so the angles were mentioned with reference to the northern axis so the last angle is south 65 degree west this is how we give the angles in case of quadrantal bearing where the angles are measured in four quadrants that we are talking about and how they will be measured with reference to the north south axis next as we discussed about back azimuth similarly for back bearings if the bearings are given that is the angles have been mentioned in quadrantal bearing then how we can determine the value of the back bear okay what is back bearing same if we are talking about bearing of a line ab then whatever is the bearing of a line ab if we say back bearing it means we are talking about bearing of line b means just opposite if we are viewing from a to b then it is four bearing normal bearing but if we are saying back bearing then for the same line we will mount our instrument at the second side and with reference to that we want the angle that means we are talking about bearing of line ba same line from opposite direction we will be viewing the first point okay so how, what we can do in this if we are talking in quadrantal bearing then taking the back bearing is very easy since we remember that each and every every angle increases by 180 degree so it is just the means mirror image with reference to the origin okay it is just the mirror image of that particular line with reference to the origin so each and every angle changes by 180 degree so if initial angle the four bearing is lying in northeast quadrant it will go in southwest quadrant 
or if it is in southeast it will go northwest means i just want to say that what we need to do here is that we change north with south and east with west or vice versa okay so whatever is the angle the magnitude of angle remains the same it's just the quadrant just changes both the quadrants both the directions northern axis will be replaced by southern and vice versa similarly east and west will interchange with each other whenever for any particular fore bearing we need to calculate the bearing value of back bearing so i have tried to show this with the help of examples also and this you can see in the figure also itself suppose this particular angle with reference to the actual northern axis if a particular line is making an angle of 65 degree so if you see its actual angle in quadrantal bearing it will be north 65 degree east because this is northern axis and towards right it is eastern axis so from north an angle of 65 degree is made towards east so the actual fore bearing of line ab will be north 65 degree east now if we want back bearing of this particular line so you can see from b if you try to side this angle towards a so what will happen this particular line ba will lie in the third quadrant okay because that line is going downwards sloping downwards and towards left so it is in third quadrant third quadrant denotes that the quadrantal which we are talking about is south and west okay so north east has just changed to south west the angle will remain same if you look at these angle this is 65 degree so at b also due to the concept of alternate angles you can say that this particular angle will also be equal to 65 degree so the angle or the back bearing for line ab will be equal to south 65 degree west okay so just you need to interchange those terms and in that table below i have tried to show with the help of few data also and you can verify that so you just need to remember that they will interchange okay the vertical axis interchange within themselves and the horizontal axis interchange within themselves so you can take any angle suppose you will take the last one so the angle that is given to us the actual bearing of any particular line if it is south 63 degree 56 minute 23 seconds west then that particular angle when it has to be reported with back bearing if we need to take back bearing of that line so if it is given south west okay what do we mean by south west south west means that particular line is lying in third quadrant falling downwards towards back okay so if we take four bearing of line then how that line will go it will come in the first quadrant it will start from point b towards point a it means now this line will move ahead and will go up so it will be in the first quadrant that is north east okay towards north towards right that is east so it will be reported with same angle north 63 degree 56 minute and 23 seconds east okay so this is how just if you want the back bearing of any line you can just interchange the values and finally calculate its value okay here few conversions have been shown between bearings and azimuths if a particular angle you know in bearing then how you can convert that to azimuth by bearing i mean that we are talking about quadrantal bearing and by azimuth i mean we are talking about whole circle bearing because azimuth and whole circle bearing are more or less same and when we are talking about bearing means we are talking about those acute angles that are reported with each and every quadrant itself okay so what is happening suppose any particular angle is in north west quadrant in the fourth quadrant and this is the angle phi okay so if you report this angle the phi that is given then this particular angle in quadrantal bearing will be reported as north phi degree west okay but if you want the whole circle bearing for this line then what will happen you can't take from north to that line in counter clockwise direction okay the actual azimuth that is taken all the whole circle bearing that is taken is with reference to the northern axis in clockwise direction towards that particular line so this angle since it is lying in the fourth quadrant so the azimuth of this particular line will lie between 26 270 to 360 degree so what you need to do since one complete revolution is equal to 360 degree from that 360 you can subtract this value of phi this angle that is made in north west quadrant and you will get the final value of the azimuth similarly for the second case of northeast this is simple mathematics you can see if the concept of the quadrantal bearing and whole circle bearing is clear to you you can always convert an angle that you have found from one system to the other one okay similarly for the second case you can see if particular angle is lying in the first quadrant so then for that case the quadrantal bearing that is reported will be with respect to northern axis in clockwise direction only because any angle that would be depicted in first quadrant will be as north phi east 
and if you try to find the value of whole circle bearing then it will also be same as alpha because alpha that whole circle bearing is also taken with respect to the northern axis in clockwise direction and it should lie between 0 to 90 degree that is satisfied on its own hence the angle will be equal to phi only similarly you can check for all the other cases you don't need to remember the formula if the for the third case you check if any particular angle is lying in the third quadrant that is in southwest quadrant then this particular angle will be depicted as south pi west okay but if you need to calculate the whole circle bearing then whole circle bearing won't be this angle it will be this alpha plus this 180 because total angle that this line is making from northern axis in clockwise direction will be 180 plus phi so the total whole circle bearing of this line will be 180 plus phi will be the actual bearing of this line which will be told as the sm and finally for south east quadrant the angle that we are talking about if it lies in the second quadrant that is south east and this angle is given to us as pi because actual quadrantal bearing which will be having for this case will be south pi east okay south pi degree is an angle and east now if we want whole circle bearing for this the whole circle bearing for this will be alpha that will be equal to 180 minus phi because that actual angle of whole circle bearing has to be given with respect to the actual northern axis so it will be that angle alpha which will be equal to 180 minus phi okay this is how the actual conversions can be done and once we know the relations between them we can easily calculate that okay just based on that data so as to verify i have given few angles you can check how we can convert the bearings to azimuths or we can go back to convert azimuths to bearings so you can take any case suppose we are talking about the first one to convert bearings to azimuths if a particular quadrantal bearing is given to us as north 65 degree 56 minute 23 seconds east okay suppose if this is particular angle we are talking about so obviously if we are talking about north east quadrant then we are in the first quadrant where x axis and y axis both are positive so if we are in the first angle then alpha will directly be equal to phi and same angle will be reported as the azimuth now you can take suppose we are talking about south 65 degree 56 minute 23 second east okay south east is which quadrant it is south going downwards and east going towards right hand side okay it is in the second quadrant if we are talking about south third one that we have written in this series south 65 degree 56 minute 23 second east it means we are in the second quadrant and if we are in the second quadrant it means the angle which is given to us is with reference to the southern axis towards east okay if that angle is given towards east it means the whole circle bearing for that particular line should be 180 minus this particular angle because the total sum till the southern axis from north to south should be equal to 180 degree and from 180 we need to subtract this value of 65 degree 56 minute and 23 second to get the actual angle that will be 114 degree 3 minutes and 37 seconds okay same way what we can do if any azimuth angle is given to us that is in whole circle bearing from 0 to 360 degree we can convert it into bearing also okay suppose an angle is given to us as 254 degree 11 minutes and 13 seconds so if it is given as 254 degree 11 minutes and 13 seconds so obviously this angle lies between 180 to 270 degree if this particular angle lies between 180 to 270 degree it means that this particular angle is lying in the third quadrant any angle that lies in the third quadrant means that if this angle is the angle that is given to us if it has to be written in quadrantal bearing so firstly since it is in third quadrant this angle will be in south west quadrant okay so the angle will be written as south west and this 254 degree angle that is given it means it is in excess of 180 degree so whatever angle that has been reported with excess of 180 degree so from 254 degree 11 minutes and 13 seconds we can just subtract 180 degree so the final value which we get as 74 degree 11 minute and 13 second and this is the angle with reference to the southern axis towards the west because this angle is in third quadrant that is south west okay and the angle has to be reported with reference to south so it will be south 74 degree 11 minute 13 seconds west okay so this is how the conversions go hopefully you would have got a great idea about this now we will be discussing something about vertical angles 
so what is the firstly difference between horizontal and vertical angles obviously the vertical angle is any angle that is taken with reference to the horizontal axis and the line of object which is not lying in that horizontal plane okay if all the stations that we are talking or that we need to take the angle between them are lying in the same horizontal plane then that angle will be the horizontal angle and vertical angles are those angles between the horizontal line of sight as well as to any instrument station or to any object that is not lying in the same plane or you can say if it is located at a some at some height or at some elevation so vertical angles when we take suppose we have to find the height of any particular tree suppose okay so what we will do we will make horizontal line of sight with the help of our theodolite and then we will make a sight towards the top of the tree or top of any object that we are talking about suppose it is any tower so or in any chimney we need to determine the height of a chimney so we made horizontal line of sight and then from this particular point where we have sighted where we have stationed our instrument we will take line of sight towards the top of the chimney once we get the line means the angle that will be formed from the horizontal reference with reference to the top of the chimney will be the vertical angle that will be enclosed and this particular angle is known as the vertical angle okay so vertical angle means that it should be in a the, the angle should be formed in a vertical plane or you can say we are talking about elevations in this case okay means some object will be elevated and all the angles are not being taken in the same horizontal plane okay and if that vertical angle which we are talking about is given as zero it means that particular angle is in the horizontal plane if all the stations that we are talking about have got zero vertical angle it means all the angles that have been taken are in the same horizontal plane which are at the ground level at the ground surface and no elevations or elevated angles have been have been reported with reference to both stations okay so now for vertical angles how we report see vertical angles can be either elevated angles or it can be angle of depression okay angle of elevation means where, wherever we are stationed the line of sight that we are making is towards the greater height upwards slope okay so the angle that will be made that will be angle of elevation it is of the same way suppose you are standing at the ground surface and you are sighting the top of a multi story building it means the angle or the sight you will be making or the angle which you will be measuring with reference to the horizontal line of sight will be the vertical angle and that angle will be the angle of elevation and if you are standing similarly just vice versa at the top of the building and try to sight a bottom of a, any particular benchmark point then what will happen suppose in this case it is shown that we are trying to sight top of a tree from the top of a multi story building then the angle which will be making with reference to the horizontal line of sight will be the angle of depression since it will be sloping downwards so whenever an angle is made sloping downwards it is an angle of depression and it is taken with negative sign and angle of elevation that is made at a certain elevation with reference to the horizontal line of sight then that particular angle is angle of elevation and it is reported with positive sign so vertical angles can range from 0 to plus 90 it means if it is reported from 0 to plus 90 then that particular angle which we are talking about is angle of elevation and if it may range from 0 to minus 90 degree it means the angle which we are talking about is angle of depression okay so if an angle is reported with negative sign it is angle of depression and if it is positive sign then it is angle of elevation one more term comes in this sense is zenith angle zenith angle also we already discussed towards the start that there will be three, three types of angles first one will be horizontal that we already discussed second one will be vertical and the last that comes in this category is the zenith angle what is zenith angle zenith angles are made with reference to the vertical vertical side vertical axis that is you can say northern axis if you are talking about then that particular angle which is taken with reference to that vertical axis is the zenith angle okay in vertical angle and zenith angle the only difference is suppose from you are standing on the ground and you are sighting top of the tree then that particular angle which is made with reference to the horizontal line of sight to the station when you are sighting that particular top of a building so that elevated angle is the vertical angle but that angle that which you are making to the top of the building if that angle is measured with reference to the vertical axis not horizontal line of sight but with reference to the vertical axis 
so that particular angle which will be forming which we take from the vertical axis to the line of sight to the top of an object or any line of sight which we are making which is inclined in the vertical plane then that particular angle which is made for that inclined plane or inclined line of sight with reference to the vertical axis is known as the zenith angle so the zenith angle if we talk about it ranges from 0 degree to 180 degree vertical angle ranges from minus 90 to 0 if we are talking about angle of depression and 0 to plus 90 if we are talking about angle of elevation but these zenith angles range from 0 degree to 180 degree from 0 to 90 it means we are talking about any point that is above the horizon means above the horizontal line of sight if we are at the ground surface then all the points that are situated above the ground surface will have an angle of 0 to 90 degree with reference to the zenith station that is the vertical axis with reference to which we are measuring the zenith angle okay and if that angle which we are talking about is from 90 degree to 180 degree it means all those angles are below horizon okay means we are talking about angle of depressions that we are taking and those angles which have got zenith angles between 90 degree to 180 degree those angles are the angle of depression if we are talking about the vertical angles that is below the line of sight or you can say below the horizontal axis or horizontal line of sight of the instrument okay so this is the concept of all the angles that are being measured i have tried to show all these angles in a simple figure if you can see zenith is the exact vertical axis from the place where the instrument has been mounted and horizontal plane has been shown exactly horizontal okay so any line of sight that we are making which we which i have tried to show with the help of dotted lines two line of sights have been made so the angles that have been measured to both of them with reference to the vertical axis that has been shown as zenith and it has been shown those enclosed angles have been shown with blue color so both those angles are the zenith angles okay and it will be positive values for the upper one it will be in between 0 to 90 that means that particular line of sight is above horizon and this particular line of sight that has been shown below the horizontal plane is below the horizon and if you check the vertical angles so for the above horizon axis that we have made that particular line of sight shown with dotted line that is above the horizontal plane has been reported by positive angle positive vertical angle which has been shown as V plus and similarly an angle that has been made below the line of sight or you can say below the horizontal plane the angle that has been made below the horizontal line of sight any angle that has been made it has been shown with negative vertical angle as V minus and will be the angle of depression okay so this is the core concept of vertical angles and zenith angles as we talk about okay now the last thing that comes in this series is how we can measure these angles okay so few devices that are available and that we most commonly use and in the survey or the traversing which i will be doing in the field okay i will show you one by one these equipments in the actual field how these instruments are used and how they can be used for doing any traversing or calculating the angles between various stations so first one in this series is prismatic series what happens with this prismatic compass sorry prismatic compass and how it is used i will now try to tell you see prismatic compass you can see it is in the form of simple compass where the graduations are there at the end of it this is the needle which you are seeing at the center okay this is the needle it has got north mark towards one side which shows you that to which side its north is there with reference to the central pivotal point this is the needle and it has got the graduations attached to this needle okay and it basically rotates and its north at any station wherever you are there its north always points towards the magnetic north of the station so wherever the magnetic north or the magnetic meridian of the actual earth axis is there it will always point towards that direction so that you can locate that point now what happens it has got north and written towards one side so that you can know which side is north and which side is south okay now with this there see two sides are there to one side what is there an object vein is there through which you will be looking that object vein has got a thread attached to it okay and to one side what is there a prism is there see this this side that we are talking about is the object vein and when you lift this to this side the eyesight through which you will be looking the eyepiece will be there okay so whenever you have to sight any line suppose you want to sight a line a b 
so from the eyepiece you will be looking even this prismatic compass is mounted over a tripod even it can be used like this only you can place it directly over plane table to get the magnetic north or you may even use it in your hand also just to get an idea in which direction the north is located but you get a tripod also over which this prismatic compass is mounted at a particular station and then you can make the line of sight to particular line so that you can get to know that that particular line which you are talking about is inclined at what angle with reference to the magnetic north okay so you can get an idea of all the lines at that particular field with reference to a particular north so you will get whole circle bearing in this this prismatic compass reports all the angles all the angles that will be reported to you you will get the line of sight of that particular instrument or that particular line which you are talking about with reference to the magnetic meridian or the magnetic north as whole circle bearing where you will get any angle value from 0 degree to 360 degree okay so it has got a prism also at this place from where you are making the sight it has got a prism attached to it and the readings which you will be reading okay the angle which is being made and the readings you will be reading here will be at that particular end from where the prism is attached and where you are looking through the eyepiece and the object way okay how it is it happens i will now try to tell you okay so that you can get a good idea of this see what happens in this actually the markings that are there at the outer ends of the prismatic compass the graduations that are there are inverted why inverted because we are sighting and we are looking through the readings with the help of a prism and that prism inverts the reading so you will be reading them in the right way but the graduations that are written on the outside needle or the graduations in the circular form that are being written are in inverted order okay so now what happens see you can see i have shown the line diagram also here you can see the angles are written as 0 90 180 and 270 okay these angles are as whole circle bearings and this angle generally starts in prismatic compass from 0 degree why it basically happens because actually we know that north is 0 degree and south is 180 degree but why it happens because see if you will be sighting any line suppose your line of sight is this way and here your line here you are standing and you are sighting the instrument this is your line of sight and here object vane is there which has got a vertical here through which you will be trying to intersect or bisect the ranging rod which is there at any particular station so when you have to read the reading you don't actually in actual you should read the reading here suppose this angle that has been enclosed here is 30 degree okay this line of sight was this was the actual north and when you sighted the instrument ab station ab so the actual angle theta that has been made is this particular angle theta and this angle theta which we are talking about when you look at it so this suppose this angle is 30 degree so the angle that this line of sight ab is making with reference to the actual north of the x instrument or the station where it has been mounted it is 30 degree so you should get the value of the bearing the whole circle bearing for line ab as 30 degree but what happens for that you will have to read the reading here okay and the prism that is attached is at the same place where you are making the eye sight why it has been attached at the same place so that the sighting and the reading of the reading okay means the magnetic graduations that have been mounted over the circular dial can be read simultaneously when you are sighting the line ab for that prism has been attached at the same place okay so when you are reading the prism okay you are reading this reading not here so this angle has been increased by 180 degree why it will happen because when you will read the reading here so they have started zero from here so if this angle is theta suppose it is 30 degree so this angle at the bottom will also remain 30 vertically opposite angle so the angle which you will be getting here the angle that you will be reading here the whole circle bearing that will be 30 degree okay so you will get the exact reading because you are reading the reading at southern end okay you are reading that the reading which you are taking is exactly after 180 degree actual reading should have been taken here because this is the angle that has been traversed at point b but we are taking the reading at the initial point from where we are making the sight okay so to counter this they have started the readings from zero in actual the reading the which you are reading is with reference to north only if you try to understand because the reading here would have been 180 plus 30 it should have been 210 degree but you are not reading this 210 since you are reading this and reading so they have started this angle zero from south so that you can take the correct reading at the southern end only 
okay that's why in prismatic compass to counteract this fx and so that you can take exact reading and your prismatic compass shouldn't move when you are trying to take the reading at the other end okay otherwise the prism may have been fixed at the other end also and the graduations may have been started from north only okay if the prismatic compass was situated here at the top end where we are making the line of sight and then for that case what may have happened they have may have started the graduation of zero degree from northern end only but they are making it from the southern end so that where you are making the line of sight at the same place you can make the reading also and that is how we can get the actual reading actual whole circle bearing reading of that particular compass for a particular line and we can get to know that yes this particular line is inclined at an angle of theta with reference to the actual magnetic north similarly we can move ahead once we have done ab we can do bc we can do cd and for each and every station we can get to know the angle okay once we know the angles we can plot them okay ab with reference to magnetic north is known bc is known cd is known de is known and that is why that is how once you get to know all the angles you can complete that traverse and you will know the deflection angle or the angles that are enclosed within each and every station with the help of prismatic compass okay so this is how the calculation basically goes next comes in the series is surveyor's compass see i have tried to show both of them adjacent to you in the right side right hand side figure the first one that you will see here is the surveyor's compass and the second one which you see here is the prismatic compass that we discussed in the previous slide the only difference here is in surveyor's compass you get the readings in quadrantal bearing system only by quadrantal bearing system i mean that the angle that which you will see will be in written with the quadrants only whether it is lying in north east north west south east or south west quadrant and that particular angle which you will be reading will be in will be an acute angle ranging from 0 degree to 90 degree only so you can see here north south west and east all everything is written the only difference that here is the dial that you can see the outer dial it is attached to the box here and in this when you have to take the reading when you have done the sighting when you have sighted the instrument from a to b and the sighting work has been completed now what you need to do when you have to read the angle you will have to read that angle on the dial only in this no prism is attached in surveyor's compass no prism has been attached and whenever you need to take the reading you need to sight it in the prism in the surveyor's compass and take that particular reading which you are wanting okay so in surveyor's compass what happens the only difference is that the reading which you will take will be quadrantal bearing and the angle which you will be seeing you will have to see over the dial gauge directly no prism has been attached through which you can get the reading and in this reading starts in normal way from the north as 0 degree and it is given as quadrantal bearing rest all the procedures remain same for each and every line you can get to know the bearings and once you know the bearings you can plot them and length between each and every axis because you will get to know the direction a b b c c d d e you can plot it that way and the distances you can easily determine using any distance measurement device and once you have got the distance as well as the angles you can complete your plot to the exact scale whichever you need to choose and you can complete the traverse and get an idea of all the stations where they are located and what is the difference in distance between them as well as the angles they are making with respect to each other okay few differences i have tried to cite so that you can get an idea between prismatic and surveyor's compass that we use see in prismatic compass the first one is that it is fixed to broad type needle the needle which we saw, saw at the center in prismatic compass the first one the graduations the marking of the graduations is attached to it and it can rotate freely okay so that particular with reference to needle it cannot rotate the needle that is there that will always point towards magnetic north with reference to that it cannot rotate that needle is attached to that circular graduations which has got the readings or the angles written from 0 degree to 360 degree but in surveyor's compass what happened the graduation circle which has got its angle written from north west south east all directions it is fixed to the box itself not to the needle the needle is free to rotate the needle is not means attached to that box okay so the box the graduations that are there on the outer periphery are attached to the box and hence it rotates with the line of sight when you are trying to sight a particular line ab you will have to rotate that prismatic compass and that particular graduations that are written needle will point in one direction and that will rotate that will start rotating when you rotate the box in prismatic compass this is not happening 
to the needle those graduations have been attached and since that needle is always pointing towards magnetic north so the, that graduations are also remaining the same when you are rotating the box then that box is starting to make angles with reference to the needle because needle is in the same direction when you are rotating the box to side any line ab then since that box is being rotated so whenever you will see line ab it will start making certain angle with reference to the actual magnetic north okay so in prismatic compass second is there is a prismat viewing end so that you can take the readings exactly and therefore all the readings that are written on the dial of the gauge means wherever the graduations are there they are written inverted so that they can be read directly as correct readings through the prism and in surveyor's compass there is no prism you have to read the readings directly through a slit okay third one is in prismatic compass obviously sighting and reading can be done simultaneously this is the major advantage that they provide and that is why they start their means graduations from the southern end because we are viewing the object from the southern end and where we are viewing so that we can take the angle simultaneously while noting down the while sighting the station so at that partic particular point with the help of prism they have attached the readings also and they start from south and end only so that we can get the exact reading and this angle is in whole circle behind and in surveyor's compass they cannot be done simultaneously once the sighting activity has been done then you have to read the reading directly with the through the slit okay in fourth one as we already know the graduations in prismatic compass are in whole circle bearing whereas the graduations in case of surveyor's compass are in quadrantal system where angles are written in each and every means quadrant whether it is northeast northwest southeast or southwest they will be written with the help of that particular angle which will be reported okay fifth one is that graduations are inverted in prismatic compass because they have to be read through the prism as i have already told you at the sighting end and wherever in whereas in surveyor's compass all the measurements are marked directly because they have to be read directly through the naked eye in the prism means in the compass whatever the reading we have we are getting on the graduations that are at the outer periphery so we have to read those readings directly through our eyesight so they are ma marked in the normal way and with the normal markings sixth the reading is taken through prism in prismatic compass whereas in surveyor's compass reading is viewed directly through the top of the glass and finally it is not at all necessary for prismatic compass to have a tripod since it directly gives us the measure of the direction it can be also used at a particular station and held with our hand only so that we can get to know the reading and the best part is since while we are sighting we can take the reading simultaneously at that point hence it is not required that tripod is at all necessary if we are not doing very exact survey but in case of surveyor's compass tripod is essential because we need to station our surveyor's compass because whenever we are doing the sighting at the same point we can't read the reading once we have done the sighting and in the instrument is fixed then we will go forward and with that from the top of the glass we will take try to take the reading and we will try to get that in which direction this particular line is pointing okay so this is the concept that goes with prismatic compass and surveyor's compass and the last one in this series are two major instrument that are basically used for angle measurement they are used for exact actually both horizontal as well as vertical angle measurement first one in this series is theodolite obviously theodolite once we have leveled this theodolite or total station the concept for both of them is more or less same total station the advantage is that it can be used for measurement of horizontal distances horizontal or vertical distances as well as for horizontal and vertical angles also it has got an electronic mechanism which directly displays the readings and the core concept i have already told you through the electromagnetic waves that travel through it it measures the phase difference and the wavelength for those waves is known to us those wavelengths go strike a reflecting prism and then come back the total distance that they uh, means traverse it is twice the actual distance it is divided by 2 to get the actual distance but these calculations we don't need to do it is actually fed within the total station and it actually calculates the correct distance okay and you can get the horizontal distance as well as the slope distance between those two points even the difference in elevation between those two stations can be determined directly uh, using the concept of angles as well as the distances 
same thing happens in theodolite but theodolite can only be used for measurement of horizontal and vertical angles at the bottom as you all know firstly this theodolite is mounted over tripod and then it is leveled with the help of three leveling screws that are present at the bottom okay that slit that means spirit level that is attached two spirit levels in, in fact in are in fact attached one is at the bottom in above just three leveling screws okay that is used for leveling of the horizontal axis means if you are trying to take horizontal angles and one is at the top just next to the telescope at the back end of the figure one leveling spirit level is also attached there there it is required if you are trying to measure the vertical angles and you have to do the leveling with reference to that vertical axis okay once the leveling has been done by rotating any two screws either out in means both outwards or both inwards and thereafter you rotate your instrument by 90 degree and try to level it with the help of third screw once the bubble comes at exact center it means your instrument is leveled you can even get it centering so that you can get to know with the help of ray of light wherever it is projected at the bottom so that you can get to know that this is the centered station once you have got those two stations now what you need to do there are two more screws that are attached at the top and bottom okay firstly you will see there is a vernier attached at two opposite ends one is vernier a that gives you the exact reading in degrees and minutes and other is vernier b at the exact opposite end that gives you the angle in minutes and seconds okay so what you need to do you need to measure read the re reading in vernier a as the difference in angle between those two stations firstly with the help of telescope you will try to sight first station a you will make back sight to that point you will fix your instrument to that particular position and see there are two screws first screw is at the top and the second one is at the bottom at towards the side okay the bottom screw is used to fix the instrument the instrument will not rotate and the second screw at the top is used to fix the actual axis means the vernier scale okay so that in that case what happens the vernier scale will not the instrument will get fixed in both way once you have fixed the instrument and sighted station a now you will lose an upper screw why you will lose an upper screw because when you lose an upper screw now when you will rotate your instrument the vernier will not rotate and if the vernier will not rotate whenever now you will rotate the instrument and try to sight station b so what will happen once you have sighted station b now its zero is at the same place at which it was there when we were sighting station o okay and now when you have rotated suppose the angle has the theodolite has been rotated by an angle of 46 degree so it has been rotated by 46 degree now you will try to sight station b and once you get the sight you will fix it here and you can read the reading on one year okay so you will get to know the exact reading to in degree minutes and seconds the least count of this instrument is 20 seconds to that you can get the exact angle which you have measured between the two instruments okay theodolites are also of two types transit theodolite this is a case of transit theodolite where you can read the reading with the help of one ear and there is electronic theodolite also which directly displays the reading between two instruments okay so this is the actual core concept and why it is known as transit theodolite i already told you because the telescope that is there attached through which we are trying to view any rod it can be rotated exactly by 180 degree you can make the sight towards le from left to right and if you rotate that particular is telescope by 180 degree in the vertical plane you can make the sight from right to left also okay so this is why that is known as transit theodolite and this can be used for measurement of angle in vertical plane also similarly just back at the top means just next to telescope you can see there is a circular dial up to the next side of that you can see leveling equipment as well as the angle measurement device that is there same concept that is for horizontal angle measurement same is for vertical angle measurement firstly you need to fix at a particular station and then when have where you have fixed the vernier for vertical scale also that is attached to that particular station then you sight any instrument that is located at any particular elevation or depression once you sight this by fixing your vernier so with reference to the actual vernier when the line of sight is horizontal you will get to know the vertical angle that has been measured with the help of theodolite the exact angle can be measured and once you know the angle you can do all your calculations as we studied as we will study in the leveling and uh, for other purposes also because vertical angles can be utilized for vertical angle measurements can be utilized for trigonometric leveling also okay wherever where you can get to know the difference in elevation between various stations 
so that also we will get to study and in normal horizontal angle measurements it can be effectively utilized to get the bearings as well as the horizontal angles between various stations the same concept is true for total station also but in total station we directly get those angles directly okay so that marks the end of this now we will understand the concept of angle measurement in labs